Oh my gosh, I'm just losing color as we speak. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Rebecca. Today I am going to show you why it's so important to add contrast in your makeup routine, especially over 50, because we are just becoming monochromatic, right? <laughs> hey there, welcome if you're new. I'm so glad you clicked on this video. Stick around, I hope, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. This idea occurred to me when one of you commented on, and I think it was a short, it might have been an actual, a uh, long version, long, you know, video of how you're starting to wear more vibrant lip colors and add contrast and color to your skin and your face over 50, over 60, because you've noticed that as your hair gets lighter and your eyebrows also get lighter, you kind of need to add that color back. And, and if that is something you've been curious about or are intimidated by, let me, let me show you what I'm doing to maximize those results and give just a like, wow face. You know what I mean? Like this isn't about adding more drama or a heavier makeup or even a brighter makeup. It's just about giving that oomph to the face that it look that feels like gets lost, um, right? I have already applied foundation and I'm using the Urban Decay Face Bond. This was gifted to me and I think that for me and my dry skin, but as I head into warm months, I do get oily. And I get it just sort of a nice, like I'm not mad about it, it's kind of a glisten, but um, in order to keep makeup from moving, <laughs> um, a formula like this, because it's sort of a built-in powder, it's weightless, it, it really sets to the skin without adding any kind of cakiness, I love it. And we've had, a little bit of a heat wave here in the Northwest. We were in the 80s, upper 80s, and over Mother's Day weekend. And honestly, I had two events I needed to just sort of look nice for, and my makeup lasted hours, and I used this. And I don't need to powder so much. With mature skin, not powdering, it feels like, you know, an added benefit because then we're not creating any kind of crepey look. Although there are some pretty amazing powders out there that don't do that. Anyway, another day, right? Okay, let's start with eyebrows. I think eyebrows are something we've always talked about that frame the face, but as our brows really, mine are starting to lighten, I'm getting gray hair throughout my brows, they're starting to thin, and that's okay, it's normal, and we're just, as we head into menopause, um, and you know, the hair on our head changes color. I'm starting to kind of blend my highlights with my gray hair and I'm just toning it versus darkening my roots. And I'm just gonna kind of play with that and see how it goes. And so with my eyebrows, I'm like, okay, so I don't wanna go too dark, but when I have a full or just a more visible brow, my face has a a brighter, more awake look. And so I'm going to just kind of take you through my routine and I comb up my brows with a spoolie and I happen to be using the Milani Stay Put Brow and I'm gonna be adding a couple different products, it's sort of like a cocktail. Um, and what I like to do is br brush my pencil or maybe a shadow if that is more your your comfort zone. And I like to brush it on top up here. And that way it's a little bit lifted from my lid space instead of starting down here. But over here, I'm going to just kind of slightly sketch just where it's thin, okay? And that kind of, you know, it's, it's not the Paisley stamp from 
<laughs> the early 2000s. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we love those days, right? If this, this Milani stay put, or any of the other, any pencil you're using or product you're using that is a little bit more pigmented, you know, the wax is a little softer, I like to just sketch it. I don't want to draw it on because then I find that I see it on the skin um, and I'm like, oh gosh, I, I, I want it on the brow, not on the skin and uh, it's sort of a, a pet peeve of mine. Now, I am going to go in with the new Jones Road Beauty. The, they have a brow crayon, and I have shade blonde, and this one has like little fibers in it, and I love how, one, this could be a one and done for you, depending on the style of brow you have and wanna achieve. I love how waxy it is, and it really does stay put it it just feels so easy I love that and then I want to add one more bit of uh, you know just kind of a, a next I do like the Maybelline this is the Express brow I like this Maybelline and I also like the new build a brow that is so nice and so it's it's very subtle and it really does a great job of the kind of flicking in any missing hair areas love this and you know it's not necessarily the shade i'm not I'm not going like a dark eyebrow but i am just kind of making it a little more uh, giving that wherever it's sort of sparse Also, I feel like when I do a little more effort on my brows, they last the day and don't, you know, kind of smear or get sort of, they don't droop from my hair. I feel like my hair and sunglasses seem to really interfere. With Another thing I like to do is to take a highlight crayon that is not necessarily for shadow but more for kind of contour or highlight and this one from Ulta is pretty great and it isn't too shimmery and it's not too pale so I can just sort of finish up kind of clean up under there and I think that it just does a nice job of when I apply my shadow to um, keep the the brows looking you know kind of kind of super model-y <laughs> shadow for us my eyelids have a little bit of a hood a little bit of a just a lot of space when I put on a bit of shadow to contrast that um, it it gives my eyes that a more sultry look <laughs> can't say that with a straight face um, but I do feel like you know the Marilyn Monroe eye it wasn't like she had a lot of structured eye shadow but she had a lot of sort of just mid-tone and uh, and she kind of looked you know sort of sort of what is that bedroom eyes I don't know so I am gonna use from the Marilyn collection from Wet n Wild I love this middle shade right here and I've just got my Angie Hot and Flashy. This is the A, what is it, 503. Um, her brushes are geared for applying to uh, mature lids. Um, okay, so I've done this before, and I, I know that if you've been watching my channel for a while, you're not gonna think this is anything new or groundbreaking, but what I like to do is take that shadow and really dust it. I like to just kind of give a nice soft blend and I'm not stopping, you know? I like to go from kind of my whole, the whole length of my eyebrow, really. But where I am stopping is I'm not going too high and I'm not going too low. I'm keeping the, the just sort of shade. 
feel, I really hope my, the lighting, I feel like I look dark in the monitor, but I always tend, I want to err on the side of a little darker because I think that gives you guys a more true vision of what I look like in real life because I think when we have our lights so bright, all our these creators on YouTube look amazing because of the lighting. Um, and then you put your makeup on, you're like, why does it not look like that? And it's because, well, they look like that, but you're just not seeing that. All right, so we can stop there if we want, and I'm happy with that for now, especially since I'm just kind of doing a casual look. Um, if you missed my how to kind of do a little liner trick, especially with, um, eye pencil I have a video I will link and it's super helpful and you guys have been very supportive of it so thank you so I'm just going to do that method here and I'm using just my prime Prometics, the liner I like that it's very it's waterproof and smudge proof The other key about contrast is because our lashes are thinning, like our eyebrows and fading and that kind of thing. If you're not keen on mascara or heavy liner, um, when you do a gentle pencil, you know, something that's just like a soft brown, but you're adding it to up here, you're giving that definition to your lid so that your eyes pop. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be with liquid liner. It doesn't have to irritate your eyes. It's just something really subtle that works to, yeah. Let's talk about cheeks. I love contouring but I think we have to be careful not to contour too much um, and look gaunt and you know or sort of muddy. I love a stick and I love like this Westman Atelier. Love this. This is shade Biscuit. It's beautiful. Not too cold. Not, not too cool. Not too warm. And I think my theory is as we are getting a lot more, you know, the color is leaving in terms of our palette, our hair, the contrast in our hair is changing, the contrast in our eyebrows. Having a contour that is too gray, too cool tone, might make you look a little less vibrant. And so to incorporate a bronzer or use a bronzer sort of like a contour, you are giving that warmth back. This is another Angie brush. This is the A507. <laughs> hey Angie, make your letters a little bigger so we can see it without our readers. <laughs> the next edition. Okay, so this is the Physicians Formula Butter Glow. I found this to be great. I don't, I, I think it comes in other shades because this one's called Fair Light. So, okay. But it's the wand type and I always make sure I don't have too much on the wand and I like to use the back of my hand, which I know it's a little messy. Um, and then I do like to put on my product from, so I, I, sometimes I just do it, go straight to my face, but then oh, I feel like I'm always messing up. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of take my cheekbone, not, not like, not that, because that goes way down here. I'm kind of, kind of doing the, you know, the like, that sort of pert little, mm, mm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, like maybe a duck face. And I'm adding it right here instead of up here. And I'm going to kind of show you why. I'm working it out. I'm working it out. And I'm just moving it up, right? Moving on up, just like the Jeffersons. And I'm also taking it down this part of my nose because for my nose shape, I just like having a little definition. 
Okay, so we've got kind of just under the apple and it's like, it creates that smile, that lift, but it's warm and it doesn't look orangey or too much. If you do get it a little strong, what you wanna do is just take your foundation brush with whatever foundation you use that day and blend that over the top of it. And then it will completely look like it's perfect. <laughs> and what I love doing with especially the Rare Beauty blush because it has that shimmer in it I do a little bit of blush. You can do it here if you want, but I also, I like to do it up here. And then that's where I get my, my color. If you don't wanna look too kind of, you know, like rouge, you know, kind of when we think of blush and older ladies and the rouge. <laughs> um, I love a, a shade like this. Okay, I'm gonna put mascara on and then I'm gonna come back and we'll do lips. All right. So I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be afraid of bright lipstick because if you've always been afraid of it, like it's messy or you can't pull it off or whatever it is, I am going to show you that you can do it and you should do it. <laughs> First, line my lips with a neutral kind of nude liner and right now my top three. Um, the BFF 2 from ColourPop, love this. I love the Swede Beauty, the liner in Cindy, and then of course BK Beauty Warm Spice. The idea is to give your lips the definition and the kind of the depth. When it, when it wears away, it just shows your, your lip versus um, a red line or a purple line. Here we go, ready? I like to follow along this way. Kind of sketching, right? And I like to overline just a little bit, just a bit. I mean, let's give it up for our first, the original overliner, Lucille Ball. Although I have a feeling Joan Crawford, she might be the one, the OG. A couple things to think about because why I'm such a firm believer in lining my lips, it lets the product last, okay? so. If you're going to wear like a nude lip and you look so washed out, lining first gives that dimension. You know, the Kim Kardashian, the JLo, the, the thing that we see without just having a nude lip on and then your face looks like, you know, like the blood has been <laughs> sucked from <laughs> your body. Um, two, because we're losing volume in our lips, this can help kind of fake it. And wherever you have maybe some more pronounced lines that are the vertical lines, then when you're putting on a waxy product before you're putting on your moisturizing cream product, you can create that, that barrier that keeps the product from traveling. And my bottom lip is crooked, so I like to overline to you know, correct um, something that is not symmetrical. And I line just sort of with my lips like this. And then I can sometimes, I'll, I'll go back in while I'm kind of eh and eh. But I am not one of those people that likes to that or do kind of strange things with my lips. I like to kind of have my shape in a neutral state so I can do the, the, the adding and the subtracting. Oh, 
Okay, and then I'll un unblending. I like to soften my Cupid's bow. Okay. Such a pretty color. It's from the Maybelline Lip Finals and it's shade 85. And it is so, look at that. Look how cute that is. All right, so you wanna shake it up, right? So cute. So I don't think this is neither nude, this is neither red, this is just sort of like in between peach. And I think it's so pretty. Look at that. It's just like, I just think it adds such a pretty. The lip finals, they set, and then you don't have to do anything with them. Having a blue shade to compensate if you want to make your teeth look whiter but let's say you're kind of a neutral or a golden undertone like myself and you like wearing more of a yellow based color, the clever thing to do is to just add something that's a little bit more blue undertone to the center where it, where it kind of like is more where your teeth are, okay? So this part keeping to your skin tone and then the center of your lip to emphasize and create the illusion of whiter teeth. So I'm gonna try this NYX. This is kind of a baby pink. And I am gonna... You can just use whatever gloss. I can't remember what the shade is. I'll lift, list it below, but it's from the Fat Slick. You know what I'm talking about. But I feel like now it kind of gives that little bit of illusion. One, my lips look a little fuller. Two, my teeth seem a little brighter. Yes? No? <laughs> anyway, because you guys are always so complimentary of my teeth. I do not whiten them. I, I have dental cleanings every six month, months. And I use Sensodyne toothpaste because I've got very sensitive teeth. And I, I've really been like blessed with good teeth genetics. Um, but they are stained because I'm drinking coffee and tea all the time. But I think we covered some good stuff. And it's always fun, I think. And I just want you to, you might not love makeup as much as I do. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like sometimes we're at that we all, all of us, whether we're young, whether we're old, whether we're, you know, moms, uh, grandmas, we look at ourselves and we just can sometimes feel like, how did I get here? What is happening? <laughs> and I just want you to sort of look in the mirror and look at your makeup table and go, or your makeup bag and go, oh my gosh, I think this is going to be fun. I think I can do this and I'm going to play with that. And you know, and just see where it takes you. And if you kind of do one of these, then, hey, make a note of that for next time. Well, thank you so much. And I will leave all the products I've used in the description box. And if I have an affiliate link or a discount code that I make commission on, I just truly appreciate when you purchase through them because it does support me and my channel. And it also tells those brands that, oh, this girl is supporting us and her viewers like us too. You know what I mean? So it's just mutual. And I hope you're well and take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.